I've seen like hundreds uh, of sharks, but now it's nothing. Sadly, just the last few years, these animals have all but disappeared from this incredible bay. It is terrible to see how that is happening under our watch. For many years, surfers on these beaches have known they have to keep a close watch out for the white flag and for the siren that indicate a great white shark has been spotted close to shore. But for the last two years, all that's changed dramatically. Wherever you go, if you put your feet into the water, you expect to encounter a white shark. Um, but that's not the case no more. I don't even remember when last I've seen the shark. Beautiful day, yes. clear blue ocean. Any sharks? No, not at the moment. None That's at all? None at all. No white sharks in False Bay. For us, one of the standout theories is the arrival of a specific type of orca. In 2015, we saw the arrival of this pair of orcas. They're very distinctive. They have dorsal fins that flop over, and they feed specifically on sharks. To us, the, the arrival of these orcas and then the reduction in shark activity does all seem to be correlated. It appears that the orcas arrive and the sharks just are aware that they are no longer the apex predator anymore. So logic tells you if your food's not available here, you go look elsewhere. And that's what a lot of us believe is what's actually happened. The tragic irony with the whole disappearance of our sharks is that the overexploitation of these smaller shark species along the South African coastline is to meet the demand for fish and chips in Australia. Unfortunately, we're suffering a lot. It's uh, very, very difficult times. For the whole town? For the whole town, yes. The whole industry? Yes. It is really, really sad. We, we miss these sharks a lot. My name is Dr. Sara Andreotti. I am a marine biologist and a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Stellenbosch. There was a 2.5 and then these are two. And these two? Oh, God. oh, that's much better. Now we're talking. One. Okay, they're all two and a half ish. We want to try and take a genetic sample from the sharks. To do that you, with that sterilized biopsy sampler, we will take a piece of tissue out of the shark skin. Comes tissue. That went through. That went in. And we got sample. Yeah, hey! Sample! Woohoo! Now we have to collect sample. these. Very carefully. White sharks are top predators, so they are actually much more vulnerable than other species to climate change, pollution. They can, uh, if you have heavy metal in the water, the animals at the top of the food chain are the ones that accumulate the heavy metal. So that will interfere with the reproductive system. Is it, is it very frustrating for you not to be able to keep testing great whites? Yes. It's also it's, it's not fr just frustrating. Is the feeling that that happened on, um, under our watch? You know, we saw the sharks. We saw the numbers were not great, and the work we did wasn't enough to get them. Uh, the environment better protected in a way and or maybe it was just too late so the frustration comes from the feeling that maybe we just didn't do enough great how does that feel good perfect good. right let's get you in plenty of beautiful sharks down here but no great whites none at all and so many theories about why they may have disappeared. But the real fear 
is that they may have gone for good. If we keep on doing what we're doing, we're not giving them a chance. If we start changing the way we've been doing things, then it is basically up to them if there are still enough to restock. They're all problems that are human related, so humans should do something about it. Let's just wait and see. It's like I still strongly believe the, sh like, the sharks will come back. Uh, it's just a matter of time. The best we can do is just keep on collecting data and keep looking. They will come back, that's for sure. That's my personal belief.